We are in the chambers of Judge Guido Calabresi, a legal scholar born in Italy, who was raised and educated in the United States and England. He is a former dean of the Yale Law School, where he has taught from 1959 until today. He still teaches in the Yale Law School. And I've never met one of his students that is not enthusiastic about <laughs> the experience they had with Judge Calabresi. And Judge, because he's a, he's a judge in the uh, Court of Appeals of the United States uh, for the Second Circuit, based here in New York City. And here in his chambers, we are meeting him today. But for a change, we are not talking about his legal field, uh, but about his family. And we are here for a precise reason. This January, New York City Opera, in collaboration with the Yiddish Theater and the Jewish Heritage Museum, are presenting a brand new opera entitled The Garden of the Finzi Contini, based, of course, on the novel by Giorgio Bassani. Not many people know, though, that Judge Calabresi's mother's name was Bianca Maria Finzi Contini. She was a literature scholar, a comparative literature scholar, a teacher for many years, a chair of her department. And I think the judge and his brother uh, dedicated uh, a lecture series at the Humanities Center at Yale to the memory of Bianca Maria Finzi Contini. So the first question is, how is your mother, your family, and you related to the Finzi Contini's fictional family portrayed by Giorgio Bassani in his book. Now, the, the book is a book of fiction. And so the story in that book is not the story of my family, and it is not the story of any particular family. I can tell you many of the events that happened there and of the individual people who are there whom Bassani used as inspiration for, so that this happened to this one, this happened to some, and some of those things happened to people in my mother's family, and some of these things, maybe more, happened to people in my father's family. But the book is not about us. On the other hand, Bassani picked the name intentionally. He wrote the book in my father's family's house which was a house that goes back to the 13th century. It has magnificent frescoes. In Ferrara. In Ferrara, by a um, pupil of Giotto's. Uh, and today, part of that house is where his books and papers have been collected because he wrote most of his things there because my father's first cousin, who owned this house, was his patron helped him. Together they founded Italia Nostra, the preservation trust in Italy, and this older man looked after him. Let's remember his him. name, Judge. That was Giuseppe Minerbi, Beppe Minerbi, who was a great... And he was my father's closest friend, the same age, and they had grown up together. Uh, Bassani wrote many of his things including the garden, much of it, in the library of this house. And in fact, when Anne, my wife, and I were on our wedding trip, we went there, and Bassani was in the library writing. He also dedicated one of his other books, The Heron, Lairone, to Giuseppe Minerbi, the man who did that. Now, why did he, in my father's family's house, think of my mother's? name. The reason I've always suspected, and now I know as a fact, is because his patron, Beppe Minerbi, had a younger sister who married my mother's brother. So it was perfectly natural that he there would think of his patron's sister and think Finzi Contini. And at that point, the name because it connoted something in the Italian Jewish community, uh, which I said, Mother, what does that mean? Why? And she said, well, I think he wanted a name that connoted aristocracy. I said, decadence. She said, it's the same thing. <laughs> and it's that that Bassani wanted to say while picking different people. And as I say, different people had different things. His patron's father, 
Nepi's father, who was probably, well, certainly the wealthiest Jew in Ferrara, and maybe the wealthiest person in Ferrara, would not hide. And in some way, some people have said he is the model for the professor. Professor Lerman, no it was beneath him. Now, yeah. he was saved anyway by, because somebody else saved him. So, but it was different. But that sense is what he wanted to give. And he think, I think the name connoted that and did that. I know this to be a case because we finally found just recently a letter from Bassani to my uncle, my mother's brother, saying essentially this. I've thought of you and your wife when I was writing this, and I decided to use the name. Is it all right? We didn't know that, but so we can be quite sure that that's how it was paid. Now, here's one of the problems and questions. The book and the movie are both great, but they're different. They're very different. And Bassani, in fact, disowned the movie. Why? Because what Bassani wanted to say was that these great, wealthy, elegant, charming, living wonderful lives had lost the power to live, the force of life, and that's why they were being wiped out. That others could survive even the horrors of the Holocaust, but that people who had become so elegant, so removed, couldn't do it. And that's the theme of his book and many of his books, so much so that some people have totally incorrectly said he was being anti-Semitic. Well, he was Jewish himself. It wasn't that. It was just an attitude towards that. The movie, instead, had a different theme. The movie, magnificent too, taking from what Bassani said, was saying the horror of the Holocaust was so great that it wiped out everything, including this magnificent life and everything else. But to Bassani, this was a betrayal of his theme. And you saw it in the last scene in the movie where the people are taken away. And one of the people who is there taken away is the father of Giorgio, Bassani himself, yes. who, Giorgio, who represents the outsider, and the father is also being taken away. But the father, in fact, instead, had been playing footsie with the fascist. It wasn't a real fascist, but managed to escape and so on. And so to Bassani, this was a total betrayal of his theme because somebody who instead still had the power to live, which wasn't as nice, wasn't as elegant, but survived, instead in the movie was taken away. Now, one of the things I'd like to know is what does the opera do? We are, we are all very curious, Judge, and we will, are going to find out in January when it opens. But tell me about your... We're going to go back to the Finzi Contini because it's an endless source of fascinating uh, stories and ideas. And I believe that... Uh, Bassani was fascinated with discovering the difference in the difference. He's interested in the Jewish community, but he's interested also to the people that are different within the Jewish community. And he presents a, a, a palette of very different kinds of people that from very rich, very wealthy, to the very modest, to the That's bourgeoisie. Right. And in his other book, Gli Occhiali d'Oro, The Gold Rim Glasses, it's like not only about a Jewish doctor, but a Jewish doctor that happens to be gay at that time. So it's like he's always interested in discovering what is different within the difference. It is, he's not well, satisfied with just simply the divisions yeah. that we normally use. And, and he know, investigates the human soul in such a see, deep way. The, the Finzi Contini were both uh, proud of their academic traditions because, uh, you know, my grandfather Finzi Contini studied with Sharkov, a man who taught Freud, and they were, they were academics uh, before uh, many other things, but also the Finzi Contini were married with, into a family uh, that was even older and fancier, who claimed that they had been brought by Titus in his triumph in 70 ordinary time 
and uh, who were elders. And they were uh, the most self-important part. And so the things he continued... Like within the Jewish community in Italy, in the, Jewish community, the fact that they came very... They, they were the very first. They were not... They weren't practicing, and yet they were proud of this tradition. Uh, they were the Zekenims of Lugo. They were now called Del Vecchio di Lugo, mm -hmm. and they had been the first professor of statistics. Uh, my great uncle was a great professor of economics. His double first cousin, who was the only fascist in the family, was president of Rome, had the best law library in the world, which is now the core of the library of the University of Rome. So there was all this sense of uh, Italian Jewry going back to Roman times and being proud of who they were because, because they were there before anybody. <laughs> they were the cows in the field <laughs> before the more recent <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not many, not many Italians can trace their origin no, back to the not. time. So. Of course not. And it was this sense, in a way, that people, you know, you, it's a small community. Everybody knew who each of these people were. And so when Bassani was writing that, he picks a name that uh, says any number of things. And it was part because he wanted to connote that kind of thing. And of course, that also made some people in the family, like my mother, troubled by it because she didn't want to be in the public square. How did your mother react when she read the book and she found out about the title? She didn't, know, she didn't know that Bassani had asked her brother. We didn't know that until recently. Uh, her brother had died, and so we didn't know it. And uh, she thought that this was, you know, people were talking about us. And again, if you were that kind of family, you didn't really want no. to be in the public square. Additionally, um, she um, thought that, that this notion of a family that was too elegant to f survive didn't appeal to her because after all we had fled we had come to America and here in America she and my father both having come from being very well off here we were without a penny and they fought back and both succeeded and both were remarkable people and so the notion of being described as people too elegant and children to, of privilege yeah. when they actually lived the when, life of immigrants when well, they came they to the were, United States. You know, it is true that they were children of privilege. Yes. When my mother came here, she didn't know how to boil water, <laughs> but she became a magnificent cook and enjoyed it. You know. So uh, it was that that she didn't like. On the other hand, and here is a funny little story. Um, I was um, in Florence with my wife, and we get a call, and my parents had come uh, on a trip, and we were spending a sabbatical, and had come to see us. Uh, I get a call from Bassani in Rome, who said, I've heard from Beppe, his patron, that your father is there. Beppe had told him, my father, because that was his close friend, he hadn't mentioned my mother. Could I stop by, I'm on, I'm on my way from Rome, to Ferrara in Florence uh, to see Massimo, my father. So I put my hand on the phone and I asked my mother, is Bassani, can he come? He'd like to come. She said, of course. So have him come for tea. 4.30, the bell rings and my mother said, let me answer. And so she goes and opens the door and says, sono Bianca Finzi Contini, which technically, you know, <laughs> her name. Yes. Uh, but said that way, Bassani understood that there was, he steps backwards and says, remembering that my mother was a literature scholar, Signora, a work of art is to be judged entirely in its quality as a work of art. <laughs> and my mother says, um, said, 
I agree. So let's talk about it because I have some problems with that too. And they go into the library of where we're staying and an hour after they come back completely friendly because my mother had done some literary criticism, but basically it's a great book. Yes. And she recognized it and he accepted the criticism of the other and they came out happy. Judge, did you witness that conversation or you were outside? Oh no, I wasn't part it was of it. Just that. the two of them. No, it was just the two of them talking about it as a work of literature. So in that case, your mother brought out her literary critic that's right. persona, not that's much right. the historical Bianca no, no, Maria no. She wasn't, she, He had said, let's talk about art, it then? as a work of art, as a work of literature, and she said, fine, let's do that, because I can do that too. And that's what brought them together. Judge, and of course you saw the film, I saw you presented it here. Did your mother uh, get to see the film? Yes, she actually, in many ways, uh, liked the film uh, because it had less of the sense of these people have lost their capacity to live and more of a total horror of the Holocaust. And also, it was just aesthetically such a beautiful film. Such a beautiful film. Uh, and, you know, the novel is, is wonderful as a novel, uh, but I've got to say, there is something about that sense that uh, the movie caught that, um, that is going even one step beyond. Uh, so they're both, they're both remarkable. You were writing a book on your family's history, is that right? I am, or you planned at least to yeah, write a book? I am writing, I've got a draft and let me tell you the, my current problem with it. This is a book about how every member of my family, blood member of my family, was saved. Every single one was saved. And each story is a wonderful story of somebody from the poorest peasant to the wealthiest, most important people doing something that risked their lives to save these people after 1943. Until 1943, you know, things were difficult, but it basically, yeah, yeah. if you were well, <laughs> it was all right. But after 1943, just everyone. Had, and my theme is less, is not my family, but the people who saved them. And trying to figure out the reason why in some cases, it was sheer menschlichkeit. In some cases, it was friendship. In some cases, it was, uh, um, I don't know, feeling of obligation because of some things that my family had done for them. Uh, in some cases, uh, it was respect for power. <laughs> in some cases, we don't know. And in all these cases, there is an element of disobeying a law. That's that right. I know it's one of your but themes it, as, as it, a law it, scholar. When a judge all finds an people, unjust law, what do you what do, do you with it, right? What do you do? And all of these people disobeyed the law, risked their lives because of which my family was saved. Now the problem is that most editors would like to hear more about my family. <laughs> and I can understand that. But my, uh, what I want to talk about is instead these people who did so much with a sense of who these people that they were helping are. And that's what, uh, that's what it's going to be, but it means a bit more work on me to do. And have you already started research and collecting material yes, about this? Uh, yes, yeah. yes. Um, and part of it is also because, um, and that's why I've written a good bit because now the material is there because I'm 89. But I am really one of the last who knows these stories. And I begin the book by saying, um, are these stories true? Yes. Are they completely accurate? I don't know. It's hearsay, you know? It's what people have... But they deserve me. to be told anyway. They deserve to be they told do. anyway. Do tell because them. Because they're close. 
And just we were talking about the opera. Tell me what is your own relationship to opera? Do you go to the opera? Do yes, you like love, it? What are your authors? I love opera. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't gone now in two and a half years because of, of COVID. I joke that uh, I love uh, opera so much that I will enjoy even an opera that is not done well. My wife uh, only enjoys the opera when it is done well. She loves ballet so much that she'll enjoy it even if it isn't done well. <laughs> I enjoy ballet when it is done well. I am, uh, the operas I like most are uh, Verdi and uh, Mozart. Uh, no, I, I will, I don't know how many times I've seen Don Giovanni. I don't know, you know, but those are the ones and we've always gone and we've gone as a family. Uh, when my son, after college, had taken a trip around the world with all sorts of adventures, he had just come back. We said, good, we will meet in New York, we'll get a box and all go to the opera. He came to our apartment in New York. We put him in the shower. He'd been traveling <laughs> as a student all the time. Clean him up good, and go. Uh, people have said uh, Justice Scalia also loved opera. And I said, yes, but the difference is he liked Wagner. Uh, I don't like Wagner. I don't like the operas that <laughs> much. It's just not me. Uh, I, I'm much more a lover of Italian opera and, uh, and also uh, Mozart, you know, whatever that is, uh, and also Puccini um, and Rossini. And, uh, but I will, uh, I'm not just Italian opera, but I love opera. So I'm extremely anxious to we see We are very this. curious to see. Yeah. Uh, I also know that originally uh, this opera was thought of, as, was planned to be done in Minneapolis. And that was an interesting thing because my wife's family is um, the family that founded Minneapolis. They went out there and started the first uh, mills and it's a great, great Minneapolis family. And her first cousin, who has since died, uh, was very much head of that family there. Uh, and old Yankees, you know, old, old, old Yankees, just the first person off a of Mayflower, that kind <laughs> of thing. And uh, he was so excited about having this opera, which in Minneapolis, in some ways, doing Minneapolis and bringing together my family and his own family for my history, wife. Yes. And then something happened. I don't know if a Minneapolis company ran out of money or something, so it wasn't done there. And I thought that was the end of the story. And then all of a sudden, uh, I get this call from Sabina, who was a student at Yale Law School, uh, telling me about this. And of course, I was delighted. So Judge, we are going to see each other again at yes. the premiere of The Garden of the Finzi Continues here in New York in January. We are very curious to see this further incarnation yeah. of the Finzi Continues family. It will be interesting to see both uh, whether the opera takes one of the themes or the other or has its own theme because works of art manage to do what they need to do to be good in what they are doing. And I really hope that this is an opera that takes this story of these people and of life of Italian Jews who are a very special, very special people in Ferrara and brings it to America in yet another way, in a way that only opera can do.